Hello everyone and welcome to my analysis of Ghost Recon Future Soldiers Move Controls implementation. This analysis may come as a surprise to some of you due to the heavy emphasis put by Ubisoft's marketing department on the Kinect integration in the 360 version of the game. So heavy indeed, it's still the only one being mentioned on Wikipedia at the time of making this video. But yeah, even though it has been hardly advertised as a move compatible game, to the point that some online stores display this cover instead of the actual one which looks like this, the PS3 version of Future Soldier does indeed come with move support. But don't get too excited. Both the 360 and PS3 versions of Future Soldier support the respective motion devices solely in the so-called gunsmith section, which allows to customize both the look of your character and the weaponry via a rather sophisticated interface. Not having access to the 360 version of the game, I can't provide a proper comparison between Move and Kinect implementations, but according to information available online, the way it works with Kinect goes like this. Moving your right hand to the right or to the left scrolls through selections, an action you can also perform by using voice commands next or previous. Raising your right hand or saying select makes the selection. Holding out your left hand allows to grab the currently selected weapon and rotate it. Pulling your hands apart disassembles the weapon, while putting them together reassembles it. If you know what part of your weapon you want to change, you can say the category to automatically jump to it. For example, saying optics brings you to the optics selection screen. Now, raising both hands enters the firing range, where you can try out your weapon. Here you can aim by holding either arm straight out in the direction you wish to aim and fire by opening your hand. Finally, raising your other arm allows to zoom in through the iron sight or optics. And this is basically it. It's worth mentioning that when using Kinect, you can't change your stance or move about, you can simply fire from a fixed position. Ok, now let's see how the move implementation works. As I've said, move is supported only in the character and weapons customization section of the game, so you need to enter that area to start the calibration process, which is a quite unusual one. Pay close attention to the move sphere as I access the supported area and notice how the RGB sphere detection sequence starts automatically. Usually you have to press or hold a button to begin this process, but here it happens right away, all the while an on-screen text asks to point the device at the PSI. Of course this means you need to be rather quick in bringing the move into camera view, but you are actually given about 5 seconds to comply, 5 seconds during which the sphere blinks through the RGB spectrum 7 times. As a matter of fact, if the sphere is not visible to the eye or it's moving during this 5 seconds process, the calibration eventually fails and you need to recalibrate. Then again, if it's visible and steady during any of the 7 RGB blinks, the calibration ends successfully. This is an interesting way to streamline the calibration process, albeit one that requires some promptness from the user and doesn't account for when the move is laying around in plain camera view, but at a random orientation. Ok, now let's take a look at what you can do in this section of the game and how, beginning from motion based controls. At the class selection screen, pressing the move button gives you control over the camera, which orientates accordingly to the orientation of the PlayStation Move. In the loadout screen, pressing the move button allows for every 3D model to be freely rotated around the 3 axis. With the DualShock 3 and I guess with Kinect as well, rotations are limited to 2 axes as you can only yaw and roll the 3D models. Basically you can point the guns up or down. To scroll through selections you can tilt the move while holding down the trigger. You don't have to perform flicks though, but simply tilt the move in the direction you want to scroll. The more you tilt, the faster you scroll. Alternatively you can scroll via the left analog stick of the DualShock 3 or the navigation controller one. Upon selecting a weapon it gets disassembled, allowing you to pick up the section you wish to modify via an on-screen cursor. 
Pressing X over a section brings you to the relative inventory, where you can scroll through the options and rotate them in the same way described previously. Now, about the cursor, when you disassemble a weapon for the first time, before the cursor shows up you are asked to point at the four corners of the screen and press the trigger, a procedure that is meant to define the degree of motion scaling relative to the size of the screen. Besides the odd requirement to point at every corner of the screen even though two are enough to measure its size, this feels like an unnecessary step, one which yields questionable results too. Given the context, a more convenient solution would have been to rely solely on the absolute orientation data provided by the move sensors, ignoring the screen size altogether. Little Big Planet 2, for example, does just that, allowing to operate an on-screen cursor without asking for an extra calibration step past the initial one. Moreover, the on-screen cursor here feels rather loose and prone to drifting away from its intended position, which is kinda ironic considering the overly elaborated motion scaling process. It gets the job done, mind you, but it's hardly the best cursor ever. Finally, tapping the D-pad in any direction brings up the optimization menu, which allows to automatically put together the best parts for control, range, maneuverability and power by simply tapping the D-pad in the corresponding direction. Ok, now the coolest part of this gun porn fest that is gunsmith mode is that you can quickly test your weapons at the firing range, which you can access at any time by pressing start. Here is also when things get really interesting with regards to the move implementation. The first thing you will notice is that the aiming system is based on a fixed reticle solution instead of a floating one usually adopted in move compatible shooters. What you are seeing here is basically the very same system in place when using a traditional controller, with the analog stick tilt detection replaced with a move one. This is actually a pretty simplistic implementation, one which doesn't take into account a few things that you need to keep in mind when working with a motion device. First of all, it's important to note that unlike the camera system implemented in the class selection screen, here the farther the controller is tilted away from the center, the faster the camera spins in that direction. Now this, coupled with the absence of a dead zone and a rather high sensitivity, makes keeping the view steady problematic. To get an idea of how it feels, imagine playing a shooter with a loose yet highly sensitive stick that doesn't recenter. Moreover, the very same assist in place when using a traditional controller kicks in upon target acquisition, resulting in a rather annoying feeling of slugginess. Now, for the purpose of simply checking out your weapons, this implementation gets the job done, so it's understandable why the developers didn't feel the need to engineer a dedicated camera system based on a floating cursor, but then again, a few simple tweaks to the current implementation would have allowed for a much better aiming experience while preserving the fixed reticle solution. Take for example the shooting sections of PlayStation Move Heroes I have discussed in one of my old analyses. Here the view is directly mapped to the move orientation, allowing to perform some rather quick and snappy movements. Then, in order to spin the camera around, you simply tilt the move past a given degree. This is a system which I believe has a lot of criminally untapped potential. It's relatively easy to implement, easy to use and highly effective. Here is an example of the same system as illustrated by the creators of the Razer Hydra motion controller for PC. They call it hybrid mode. Ok, enough digression. One last issue to mention about the camera system in Future Soldier is that in order to aim straight, you actually need to point the move at the PSI rather than the center of the screen. Of course you can try cheating here by pointing at the screen rather than the camera during calibration, but after a while the automagical algorithms of the PlayStation Move technology will figure out where the camera actually is, so you will eventually aim at the ground regardless. This is a mistake on the developer's part, not an issue with the Move technology, mind you. Ok, now let's talk buttons. To fire you pull the move trigger and to reload you press the square button. Tapping triangle swaps between your primary and secondary weapon.
To crouch you press circle while holding it down allows to go prone. Holding L1 on the navigation controller zooms to an over the shoulder camera view, while tapping the main move button allows to aim through the iron sight or scope. Unlike the Kinect implementation, the Move 1 also allows to move about freely using the analog stick, as well as to roll sideways while prone. Holding down the X button rushes forward, while tilting the move allows to turn slightly. This last action is mapped to the left stick when using the DualShock 3. I guess the reason why this is not the case when using the move is to provide a way to move about without having to pick up the DualShock 3 or the navigation controller. Anyway, pressing X near a cover allows to snap to it. When behind cover, you can quickly move to another one by simply looking at it and holding down X. This cool cover swapping method works the same with the DualShock 3, but only the move implementation allows to also spin the camera around while rushing. Before moving on, allow me to discuss a little issue I've found with regards to the navigation controller support. Notice here how from time to time my character keeps walking upon releasing the analog stick, as if the stick dead zone was basically non-existent. I tried this with two different navigation controllers to be sure it was not an hardware issue on my end, and it's not. When using the DualShock 3 instead, I couldn't replicate this issue. Initially I thought this was due to different degrees of tilting sensitivity on a hardware level between the DualShock 3 and the navigation controller analog sticks, the latter apparently being more sensitive than the former. But interestingly enough, it actually seems that developers can tie a specific software dead zone to a specific controller port. In this case, it turns out that the software dead zone is applied only to controllers connected to port 1. Every other port has basically no software dead zone applied to it. As a matter of fact, if I switch the navigation controller from port 6, which is the default one, to 1, the issue vanishes. Then again, if I switch to any other port, such as port 3, the issue kicks back in. This issue only applies to the navigation controller. The DualShock 3 doesn't work at all if you assign it to any other port that isn't the first one. Of course, since you will likely be holding a DualShock 3 when entering this area between gameplay sessions, you will hardly ever notice this issue with the navigation controller, but I thought it was worth mentioning regardless. Now, with all this movement talking, you might be wondering why move support is limited to the gunsmith mode. Honestly, I wonder the same. After all, the current implementation, unlike the Kinect one, seems to be rather suited for a broader application. Besides some necessary tweaks to the camera system, everything you need to play the whole game with the move is basically there already. Well, minus one thing, actually. Future Soldier makes use of every single button of the DualShock 3. Now, while the navigation controller mirrors those located on the left side of it, the move itself is actually missing one. More specifically, with the current implementation, there is no alternative to the R2 shoulder button, which is the one used Ready. to mark targets for your teammates, among other important things. Marking the third. Say when. Standing by. Fire! Fire! Then again, this is hardly a deal-breaking issue, since actions such as reloading or weapon switching could easily be mapped to a simple gesture, freeing up a button that would allow to achieve input parity. At the end of the day, this is all wishful thinking, of course, since no indication is coming from Ubisoft about a possible extension of move support across the whole game. Which is a great shooter, by the way, one totally worth playing, even with a DualShock 3. And this is it. Thanks for watching. Ciao!